Welcome, my name is Brendan. I'm the creator of Knitwits and Yarns, and this is a little look into my latest beanie creation, which is the Cable Beach beanie. I've got a few over here. So this video is just gonna have a little look at the name, um, a few of the attributes that you'll see in the beanie, have a look at the pattern, and um, just show you some of the ones that I have made. So let's get stuck straight into it. The name I chose was the Cable Beach Beanie. I have one right here. So I named it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because of the cables that you can see on here. And secondly, Cable Beach is a pretty famous beach that is located in the top northwest corner of Western Australia. Um, and I just wanted to pick a name that kind of represented firstly the beanie and also the region that I'm from. So I'm from Western Australia in, I'm in Perth and um, it's fair, fair way away from Broome, but I kind of wanted to just pick some names that had iconic um, landmarks for my latest or for my upcoming beanie collection. So let's get into the cable. So the cable here, don't know how well you can see it, there's uh, photos online if you need to have a look, but it's the C4B cable stitch. This stands for cable for back. What you do is when you're knitting, you will slip four stitches onto your cable needle, hold that at the back of your work, you'll knit the next two stitches from your left needle, and then you'll knit the next two stitches from your cable beanie. So a really simple cable stitch, um, and it's one that I was first kind of introduced to when I first started cable knitting. So that's what I wanted to bring to you. I wanted to bring to you a nice simple beanie that introduces a new stitch to you, something that you can practice a number of times in one project and something that can help you in the future. Um, a lot of my beanies, I want to kind of sequence from easy to harder. I have my retro beanie, the ones that you can see at the back. I also have my turtle stitch beanie, which was just, um, knitting and purling. I have my seed and, seed and stitch beanie, seed and rib. One of those, um, that's a cable, uh, that's sorry, that's a knitting and purling one as well. And now it's time for my cables. So after this one, it gets a little bit more tricky and I just wanted to introduce a nice easy one for you. So it's part of the design, it's a seven stitch repeat. So you've got a purl to separate the stitches You've got a knit stitch, you've got the cable, you've got a knit stitch, purl. Knit stitch, cable, knit stitch, purl. And that just repeats all the way around. I have five sizes. I've got extra, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. I usually knit a large. My head, I believe, is 58 centimetres around. I'm not sure if that's big, small. I think that's pretty normal. Um, and I don't know the inches, but two and a half inches per two and a half inches per centimeter. So I believe it's what, like 23 inches, if my mass is correct. So 23 inches around for the large. Um, extra large is I think an inch bigger than that. And then each one below, I believe, is an inch. I don't have a script in front of me, but I will post the sizes and the details in the little comment blog blurb thing below so you can have a read through that so another thing is the pattern repeats this one i've got wearing now it's above ear length this is kind of the perfect size for me it's a bit more fashionable i believe um and also the weather that i'm in the climate i'm in i don't really need to cover my ears so i've done it above ear for this one um with the pattern you'll see there's a recommended uh pattern repeat for each size. The pattern repeats are the rows. Um, each repeat is about one and a half centimeters. So if you wanted to add or um, decrease the size of your beanie, all you have to do is add more repeats or take more repeats off. So the recommended size is just a recommendation. And I think the re recommended size is for the ear length. So that's about just below the ear lobe to the crown of your head. I know all heads are different, so what I've suggested is that you measure your desired length um, or desired fit. So for me, I'll measure above my ear hole, just below the tip of my ear and to the crown of my head. 
So that's important. Also accounting for the folded brim. So that's also accounted for. What you can do if you don't want the folded brim, what I'd suggest, making a smaller brim and increasing the number of repeats. So that's always important to account for that. What I'd also suggest is if you try your beanie on, when you, when you finish it off, sew it all up. No, finish it off, cast it off or sew it up, but leave the tails on the inside. This one hasn't yet finished. So tail on the inside, try it on. If it's too big, you can just undo that, take the crown out and reduce the, um, oh, and take a row out or a couple of rows out for the repeat. If it's too small, take the crown out, add a few more repeats and you should be good. So try not to sew in the loose ends until you have tried it on and finished it because yeah, you can always adjust it. But I would uh, start by measuring and going from there. Each um, size has a different number of repeats. So I think the extra small has 10 repeats. Each repeat is seven. So that makes it a 70 stitches all the way around. It's knit in the round. So the small would be 11 repeats or 11 stitch repeats. And then the medium would be 12, large is 13 and extra large is 14, I think. So that's how I've determined my sizes, just an extra one of these seven stitches. Other things, probably best to try it on, I guess, and just show you. This one's made from Brooklyn Tweed Shelter Yarn. It's what I use for a lot of my beanies and a lot of my jumpers. It's a worsted weight 10 ply. I've used a five millimeter needle for this pattern. Um, and yeah, and this one is made using a 12 ply. I get confused with the conversion. I, I believe that might be an Aaron or something like that. Um, yeah, this is a 12 ply using five and a half millimeter needles, bigger needles, bigger yarn, smaller pattern. So I've used the same pattern, but I've just made a smaller size just to account for um, the bigger needles and the bigger yarn. So I'll try this one on and I'll show you what it looks like. So this one's Patton's Jet Yarn. So this is one that we get in Australia. Nice big brim. This one covers the ears a bit more and it's a bit more, yeah, it's definitely warmer. I can feel it already. Um, you can see that it's a nice simple cable design in here. That's what I wanted to go for. I didn't want to mix it up too much and I wanted to have a fair few sizes. So like I said, I kind of want to hit maybe like the toddler size or the young adults. No, nah, sorry, not toddler size. I want to hit maybe the young teenagers up to uh, men's. Uh, this beanie here, this is a shorter one. Just got to find the back, it's pretty hard. So this is a shorter one using patterns jet yarn as well, the 12 ply. Knitting with the smaller size, Again, so I think this might even be a small or a medium. Not too sure, I haven't double checked that, but I've made it like a above ear length for this one. So this is probably one of my go-to beanies, um, definitely the size as well. And lastly, I have Wool in the Gang Super Trooper yarn. So this one is a 10 ply. I'll just find the back, can't even find it. Might just have to throw it on probably there. So this one, again, above ear length, this is what I've done for this one, above ear length. I like, I like the size. For the uh, Will and the Gang, my tension was the right stitch tension, but my rows were different. So what I had to do was I had to add another um, pattern repeat for the rows to kind of build it up to that size. Um, it's always very, very important to do your tension square. I think especially with shelter, I'm finding that some people might not get the same tension as me, which is completely fine. You can make it with bigger needles, smaller needles, completely fine. Try to get the stitch count. Um, if you can't get the stitch count, then not too sure. But the row count, you can always adjust. So if you don't quite get the row count, add some more rows or take some rows off. That's pretty easy. With the stitch count across, that's always very important to get right. 
So always test that. Always measure up your beanie as well because, or measure your head before you start your beanie because no one likes pulling their uh, work back. But don't hesitate to pull it back. You're going to be wearing this or maybe a friend might be wearing this. Um, so you want to make sure it's, it's done right. The pattern is uh, pretty detailed, I'd say. I've gotten it tested by a number of people. It's turned out amazingly. I'm really happy with the result and um, I'm really excited to release this pattern. Hopefully when you're watching this, it's already been released. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of daunting at times to release and put my, put my hard work out there to be kind of, I guess, judged. But I love seeing the finished results. So if you do make one of these beanies, just uh, tag me on Instagram using the hashtag Cable Beach Beanie. So I'll add that little hashtag to the blurb below. If you have any questions as well, don't hesitate to ask. I try and get back to as many people as possible. Um, I really appreciate the support that everyone gives me. Um, that just helps, helps me to feel confident to release um, these beanies. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate and I'll be seeing you soon. Cheers.